Sunday, 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 Sunday school. Sunday, 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 Sunday. guys, it's Miss Waynell from that SundaySchoolGirl.com. You already know, I am basically like your super cool auntie who just happens to teach Sunday School, and I am here to get you ready for the 4th of July. I have missed y'all so much. Thank you for putting up with me and my crazy busy life. You know that things get a little out of hand, and I'm not able to make the videos, and the truth is, today I was actually in the kitchen preparing my items for our 4th of July celebration tomorrow. I get to hang out with a few of my friends in a very small group, which I'm pretty excited to do because, you know, things are different. Last year, we didn't get to do so much in the pandemic, and now I am fellowshipping in very small groups, but I was working on my cake, and I was like, whoa, I haven't made my video for my friends, so I stopped what I was doing, and I came in here and flipped on the camera because our time is important to me, and I love you all so very much, so I pray that you're well, that you're doing something amazingly fun this weekend. I don't know if you're going to go out and watch fireworks, or maybe if you have your own fireworks, I'm sure that your grills are lit up, that your families are cooking eat good stuff and have a great time. But most of all, please remember that we still want to do things in a way that is safe. So make sure that you're still washing your hands and doing all those things that we have been doing. But of course, before we can do all the fun fireworks and barbecue and all that stuff tomorrow, we are going to be in Sunday school. So let's talk about tomorrow's lesson. It is entitled, An Attitude of Gratitude. An Attitude of Gratitude. And if your adult has not already done so, make sure that they download the kid pack for you. I put it in the description box. If you look down below, they can click the link and grab that for you. And there are lots of activities in here. And one of them is actually asking you, what are you grateful for? If we're talking about having an attitude of gratitude, what is an attitude? It really is our outlook, the way we see a thing, the way we handle life has to do with the attitude that we bring into it. And so I wrote down five things that I am grateful for. And actually this month, I personally have been focusing on gratitude because I believe this, that when we complain about what we don't have, we make ourselves really sad, really miserable, but Gratitude really allows us to express our thanks and it puts us in a happier place because we learn to be very happy with what God has given us and to value and appreciate him for giving us just what we need. So the five things that I am grateful for, um, two of these come out of my gratitude journal this week. I was grateful for the rain one day this week. That may not mean anything to anybody else, but I live in Texas and by now we should be in triple digit heat. But when the rain comes, it not only cools things off, but I don't have to go outside and water the lawn. So I am very grateful when I see the Lord send us good rain. I am grateful for peace. I just enjoy when there's no, I don't like confusion. I don't do well when there's a lot of energy, anxiety, and things aren't in, under control. So I am grateful for peace. I'm also grateful for my health. I am so um, just not only in the scope of COVID, but just overall total health. Um, when I went to my physical this year, my doctor says, looked at my blood work, everything is really good. So I'm grateful for that. I know that that is nobody but God who does that. I am grateful for my family and my friends. And I put that on one line together because I really think about the community that surrounds me. I have an amazing family and I'm so appreciative. My mother is still living. I have a sister. I have a brother. Um, my brother has a wife. That's my bonus sister. And they have children. There's a grandchild. I love my family. I love my extended family. I really miss like holidays like the 4th of July uh, really make me think about how much I miss our large family being able to be together. My mom had 11 brothers and sisters. And so it's not uncommon for us to have very large uh, 4th of July and very large Thanksgiving events. But I love getting together with my family. But I also love my friends. And my friends are literally the community of people who are around me. And they're people like you. And I'm so grateful that you you and I have a relationship. So I think about my community that makes up 
my family and my friends. Finally, I am grateful for freedom. I am so grateful to live in a country where I have freedoms and liberties that in other places we don't they don't have those but we have the ability to choose and one of the things that I'm so grateful for that I get to choose inside of my freedoms is my choice to love Jesus Christ and to serve him and there are places where that is not welcome so I'm grateful for that and I'm going to challenge you this week as we study about an attitude of gratitude to find five things that you're grateful for And be very vocal about those, share those with people and encourage them to create spaces of gratitude as well. We're looking at the story of 10 lepers out of St. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19. Now we actually have two different scriptures in our lesson. The first one comes out of Leviticus and basically it gives us a rule. We learn a bit about leprosy, which was a skin condition, uh, but a very... It's, it was contagious, it was uh, very dangerous, and it would cause spots on the skin. They could lose limbs. Um, other people could catch it. And so the rule tells us that when people were identified with those spots on their skin, they were treated a certain way. They had to um, wear clothing that was torn. They had to wear their hair loose. They had to live outside in isolation. They had to say out loud, unclean, and they had to cover their mouths. Does this remind you of anything? The idea of having to cover your mouth, live in isolation, and disease that's contagious, that should remind us a lot about our last year um, as we dealt with the quarantine, what that's been like uh, for people who've had to go through the isolation of quarantine. And so as we look at that and think about our own lives, we can kind of understand a little bit better these people um, in these communities with leprosy that were isolated. And that's what's happening as Jesus comes through. um, He's between Galilee and Samaria. And as he approaches a village, there's a group of 10 men outside the city. And they are having to live outside in isolation with their mouths covered, clothes torn, hair loose. And they need to let everybody know we are unclean. But these men also use their voice for something else. They realize that when Jesus is passing by, there's this amazing opportunity to get his attention because they know that he is able to do something for them. And so they cry out. They say, Master, have mercy on us. Help us. Please help us. And when Jesus sees them, he just looks at them and he says, go show yourself to the priest. Now, remember, these men need to be healed. And Jesus says, get up and go. Maybe they were looking for something really outrageous to happen but Jesus simply uses his words and his words were healing he says get up and show yourselves to the priest and so these men get up and they begin to move and they weren't necessarily healed when they stood up but the bible tells us that as they went as they obeyed while they were in process we don't get to know when it happened but by the time they arrived at the priest they were healed but as they go Remember, there are 10 men that are outside asking for his help. But there's one man who, while he's going to show himself, realizes what's taking place. And he turns around and he comes back to Jesus and he bows at his feet and he thanks him. He just begins to pour out his gratitude, much like we were doing earlier. He was grateful for what Jesus had done. And this man was a Samaritan. Why is that important? Well, because Samaritans were not the Jews. We would have expected the Jews to know who Jesus was or to bring honor to God and to acknowledge God for what he had done, but not a Samaritan. People kind of looked down on them. And this, the, Jesus asked this man, hey, weren't there 10 of you? Where are the other nine? Only this man came back to give God thanks. And then he tells the man, stand up and keep going. Go on your way to the priest because you have been healed, not only of your skin condition, but Jesus also healed his heart condition. That day, that man received total healing, healing in his body, but also the healing in our soul. That's why Jesus comes. He doesn't just come to to make things happen in our lives and to, um, to uh, miracles to happen because he showed up. At the end of the day, the purpose of Jesus Christ coming into the world was to save those who were lost, to seek and save, to look for those who were lost. But this man is highlighted out of everyone because 
He did not take for granted the fact that Jesus had healed them. He wanted to express his gratitude. Let me talk about gratitude for just a moment because I want you to pay attention that gratitude was more than just being thankful. He literally did something about it. He literally turned around and he came back and his heart posture was submitted to Jesus and he literally bows down to express his thanks. You and I must find ways that every single day, no matter what's going on, we can be grateful. Our lives may not be perfect, but on that day when you're having your worst day, Find the thing that you can be grateful for and I promise you it will shift how you see the day and it will shift how you approach things. I love you all so very much and I am excited about you and the purpose of God in you. Have an amazing day tomorrow and again, eat lots, enjoy it all, enjoy your family, stay safe and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Changing the way you see Sunday school with that sun.